Hello and welcome to the first episode of our new series about the F-18 simulators here at Altitude Flight Simulation. Today I'm going to take you through the cockpit layout in what I call the cockpit familiarization. So we'll start over here with the primary control, the stick. So you're going to hold it kind of like you would with a grip. Over here on the left you have the throttle. Now the stick and throttle will compromise most of your maneuvers. You can move the stick around, has a pretty big range, and the throttle will control your gas. Forward to go fast and back to not go fast. Now, in addition to those two controls, you also have your rudder pedals, which are mounted down there uh, where your feet are resting. So you have two kinds of motion. You can differentially push one side in, which will bring the other one out. And you can also press down with your toes on them, which controls your toe brakes. Next up, let's take a look at our front console. So we have a number of screens up here, and they are as follows. The engine and fuel display, the multi-purpose cutter display, our backup gauges, our left DDI, our upfront controls display, our right DDI, and finally, our heads-up display. Next up, I'll take you through in detail over each of these displays and what they do. So over here, we have our engine and fuel display. Up here, we have a graphical representation of our fuel level, along with the numerical representation indicating 9,300 pounds of fuel remaining. Over here, we have our nozzle position indicator, uh, saying that our nozzles are 81% of the way open, and at full power, they should be at 100%. Over here on the left, we have a few numbers. The top ones indicate engine RPM, then engine temperature, then fuel flow, and finally, oil pressure. Now it's important to note that fuel flow in the F-18 can spike up to very large numbers if we don't keep an eye on our throttle level. Notice what happens as I slowly increase the throttle and our RPM starts increasing. And right now our fuel flow is still in the double digits, 54, 55. And as I add a little bit more power, it's going to spike to well over three digits indicating that we are in full afterburner and full power modes. So if we're going to fly around in that mode uh, the entire time, we should expect a very short flight as it's going to drain our fuel tanks pretty rapidly. Over here, we have our multi-purpose color display, which is used for navigation. So we can see a map of the terrain around us on here, and we are represented by this aircraft symbol in the middle. We can select the waypoints that we're flying towards with the up and down arrows over here. And we can select which mode we're navigating towards using the waypoint selection up here by clicking to box or unbox waypoints. Or we can also select TACAN over here. And finally, for instrument landings, we can also select ILS over here. Next up, we have our backup instruments. So all of these instruments actually show up on the HUD. So uh, the, this area is purely as a backup in case of a HUD failure. Over here, we have our ADI, we have our speed, we have our altitude, and we have our climb rate. Finally, we have over here our RWR, or radar warning receiver. Now this tells us the direction in which an, an airborne or a surface-based radar is looking at our aircraft. So, our aircraft would be mounted in the center there, and we can see the clock direction in which the radar signal is being received from, whether it's 12 o'clock at the top or 6 o'clock at the bottom, meaning behind us. And now for one of the most imp important elements of our cockpit, this is the DDI, or Digital Display Indicator. So we have two of them. This is the left one, but the right one is functionally identical, so I'm only going to focus on the left for now. We have uh, a number of options that we can select by pressing the buttons around the screen. And right now we're in the tactical menu. So this shows us the, our tactical options. We have electronic warfare, situational awareness, a heads up display repeater, our attack radar, weapon selection, and forward looking infrared. Now, if we press menu from any page, it will take us back to the tactical page. If we press menu again from the tactical page, it will take us to our support pages. So really quickly here, some of the examples will be 
our flight control system page where we can monitor the settings and the positions of all of our uh, control surfaces. We can have our backup ADI being projected up here. Or we can have our HSI, our situational indicator, being shown on here. And it's already being shown on the multipurpose color display, so this would be uh, in addition to that display down there. So we have a number of other uh, options, but these are most of the important ones. And now for what is possibly my favorite cockpit element, this is the UFCD, or Upfront Controls Display. So you'll notice that we have a keypad on here, and this is going to be where we enter all of our numbers, whether it's navigation uh, waypoints where we're putting in latitude, longitude, or whether it's radio frequencies or navigational frequencies. So to start off, some of the options that this gives us is setting of our ILS or of our autopilot modes. For example, we can go barometric altitude hold or flight path attitude hold. And at any point, we can press the CNI button to go back to the main communications and navigation interface. So in addition to all of those cool and useful communication and navigation functions, we can also press this button down here that gives us DDI. That's right, this can even give us the functionality of either the left or right DDI. So now we have three DDIs. So right now it's showing the forward-looking infrared page. And because we don't have the buttons all around this uh, screen like we do with the DDIs, it's actually a touch screen. We can just press the selection that we want to make directly on the screen. So we can open our situational awareness page on here or our attack radar and this frees up our left and right DDIs for other functions. And now for our heads up display or HUD. Over here we have our flight path vector, our velocity vector, and that's this circle with the wings and a rudder. And that tells us where we're going at this instant in time. In this box on the right we have our altitude, and in that box on the left we have our speed in knots. So right now we're going at 454 knots pretty fast. Up here we have our compass, so that shows us the heading that we're going. Right now we're heading directly at 000, which is directly north. This line, the wide one, uh, all around the, the velocity vector, that's our horizon line. Up here is our 5 degrees of pitch line, and down here is 5 degrees of negative pitch. In other words, this is our pitch ladder. Down here we have our distance to the currently selected waypoint, and up at the end of the compass here on the left side, you'll notice this extra line that doesn't show up on the right. That is our heading bug. That shows us the direction that we need to turn to get to our waypoint. So we combine that with the distance, and now we have our heading and distance to our selected waypoint. Over here on the left we have three numbers. The first one, alpha, is our angle of attack. Right now our angle of attack is 2.0. Mach speed, so 0 0.82 times the speed of sound. And G loading, 1.0. And finally, we also have this little arrow that's showing up that's right next to the velocity vector, and that's our acceleration cue. If that arrow moves up, that means we're speeding up, and if it moves down, it means we're slowing down. Right now it's perfectly aligned with the velocity vector, telling us that our speed is not increasing and it is not decreasing. And that's the end of our first episode of our F-18 simulator tutorial. Thank you for tuning in, and we will be having more episodes in the future on various topics on about the F-18. Next episode will be on air-to-air -air dogfighting, where I'm going to discuss some tactics and some systems that will help us get that kill.